So now we move on to the body sculpting, rather the body armor sculpting. So here I use this body as a base from which I'm going to extract the armor. Generally speaking, the armor is quite lightweight, and therefore just guiding the armor based on the structure of the body is enough, and therefore I'm going to be using a lot of extracts in the panel loops. So here I'm drawing the key chest plate. group it, panel loops, set the right settings, and there we have it, we've got a chest plate. Start sculpting that chest plate that we extracted slightly. I want that section of the chest plate to protrude further, therefore I used combination of move elastic as well as the transpose feature masking the region I want to manipulate now I want to extract a secondary plate on top of that primary chest plate make sure we have enough resolution first which we have just about enough to extract a secondary plate isolating only one side of the surface once again, same procedure. There we have it. I made sure that I isolated simply one side so we extract only one component. Control W to group, panel loops, extract once again. Now I'm going into the body and sculpting inwards using Z sub with clay brush. I want to sculpt sockets where essentially screws and gears will be placed onto the body. I want this armor to be somewhat cyborg robotic in a way, half human half robotic where the armor and the gears and the tech is well integrated into the body. That's kind of the effect that we're aiming for. More insert mesh I think I accidentally extracted too much. Right, so at this stage I begin to sculpt some neck pads. So far all we've been doing is extracting features from the primary uh, base body sculpt and using the panel loops a lot. We have a single high resolution body mesh and from that high resolution body mesh we're literally just we're basically just extracting features, extracting plates, pads and using the insert mesh brush at the same time in order to introduce additional elements. And it works well for lightweight armor which is well integrated and follows closely the structure of the body. If, if this were fantasy armor, this would not work so well, because a lot of fantasy armors have large shoulder pads and large independent structures on them. Once again, adding gears and cogs, using more insert mesh, placing them on those regions on those socket regions where they integrate with the body Experimenting with insert mesh brush here, but clearly some things just don't work out. It was a little bit random. I don't recommend that you do a lot of too much random experimenting. 
but sometimes you do get happy accidents or things that somewhat work out. Just a reminder that we are concepting on the fly. So we're trying to figure out key design shapes, key details, etc. as we go along. There's no concepts upon which this is based entirely yet. So it's all design on the fly. More of the same, just trying to fit in these pentagonal type units into place. Still wasn't sure what to do with this protruding section of the chest plate, so I revisited it. Alright, now, as far as the neck pad, I decided to go for a padded type effect. So I bring out the slice brush, and I want to create polygroups by slicing them into place using the slice brush. So I isolate only one face, I don't want the double sided slice, and now I use a slice brush or slice curve brush and simply create straight lines across the horizontal cross sections in order to create polygroups in a padded like structure. Then given those visible polygroups, we simply use the panel the panel loops feature, and then we achieve this padded like effect. It's like a neck pad in a way. Now we create a wire in order to outline that neck pad and some wiring to flow down the outline of the neck pad but also to to be inserted into one of those sockets upon the armor seems like a natural effect There we go, it's it's shaping up now. Decided to do more insert brush, insert mesh. Using primitives at this point, simple insert cube. Insert cylinder. So this is all so far being sculpted at one single resolution level and as one unified object or subtool. It's convenient for design often. So we're just adding simply tertiary detail here. Then connecting this component here with some basic wiring using another insert mesh brush. It's like a double wiring. Positioning it into place by manipulating the curve initially and then finally using a bit of move elastic brush for the finer sculpting and positioning. There we go.
continuing to add detail using the insert mesh brush. More wiring placed in such a way that it follows a nice flow. So those small plates I inserted have a protruding section under, underneath which the wires would flow. You do want to make sure that you get good neat flow in your designs. It really adds pop and great design. So the, the direction in which your wiring flows, the tubes, the silhouette, and so on and so forth. Because at the end of the day, like silhouette, form, flow, it's all an art form when combined together in the correct way. And the flow is about where you direct the, use, the person viewing their vision or their focus for the piece. For those viewing the art, yeah. Alright, creating another inset in the sternum region. I decided to integrate that region further with the body and add another steam gear. Creating a vent like structure upon the sternum. Same technique as before, as we did for the other sockets. And there we go. Alright, decided to duplicate some of my tertiary details and reposition them. Once again, use you isolate the region you want to duplicate by keeping as the unmask feature or masking it and then inverting the mask and then you given the transpose tool and the move tool you press control shift while moving to duplicate it at this point decided to load additional vent brushes and now I'm just experimenting with various brushes that I've got from before and all these brushes ca can be found in the insert mesh repository on ZBrush Central. Although my experimentation here, I must say, was fruitless, but I didn't have a clear idea of where I wanted to take this at that point, so I thought I might as well just experiment with various insert mesh brushes, see if I get any new ideas. Clearly it didn't work out, because you don't want too much random detail. It's weak in design. The details usually need to serve some kind of purpose, unless they're very tertiary and just decorative. They're connecting these components with another wire just for the sake of added flow in our tertiary details. Alright, so here I decided to add another neck pad with which to outline the previous neck pad but, but traveling down the flow of those neck muscles along the side. So I was experimenting with various styles or variations for how I would approach this neck pad. Again, a key advantage of using ZBrush and a single mesh and panel loops and insert mesh is that you have a lot of liberty in experimenting various shapes. So I was not satisfied with most of these till now. I tried various masking shapes around until I got something that I thought would work. These are all the same techniques till now. You high resolution mesh, 
upon which to extract the armor, masking, grouping the area that you mask with Control W, using panel loops to extract it, slice curve possibly uh, to aid with the masking, and then panel loops as well as insert mesh, and some basic sculpting brushes. Really, it's all that simple, the workflow till now.